Hello, my name's Brian Lee. I'm here on behalf of FIRST to walk you through an inspection checklist process. I am the lead road inspector for the Grand State Regional in New Hampshire, um, and welcome to this. I have with me Colin and Nick as students of uh, this robot from Team 501 to try and help you walk through the uh, checklist itself. Hold it. Thank you. So, the checklist itself is on the website. What we start off by, in terms of the process, would of course be filling a team number, and basically my name as an inspector for walking through the um, initial inspection. We'll walk through in phases here. We'll start with the initial inspection. We'll go through the remaining uh, sections in order, just to give you an idea of what's going to be happening. We would start off with the weight of the robot, and while we're not at an actual competition, what would happen there is an actual scale that's rated to the full weight of the robot and sized about almost a a two foot, no, three foot by three foot square, but we don't have that here in front of us. What I recommend for you as a team, if you want to check your weight, is maybe a couple of bathroom scales, one under each wheel of your robot, and you basically add up the, the weight of the intro scales to check yourself against the total robot weight. Now remember, that's 120 pounds, no bumpers, no mini bot, no battery. Now keep in mind that those scales are probably not calibrated, and you have to keep that in mind when you come up to an actual competition, the scale there is calibrated, so there may be some discrepancy in what you weigh yourself and what you'll see at competition. Sizing. Remember that you have to fit within a 28 by 38 by 60 inch rectangular volume. What we use at the regionals is basically a Lexan box that will enclose your robot on all sides. Since we don't have it here in front of us, but I'll show you some of the tips that I've seen for fitting inside that box. The biggest tip is that when we measure inside that left hand box, you of course want to measure your entire um, width here, which you see here is 36 inches. But what you want to keep in mind is that because we're enclosing the robot, any screw protrusions like hex head screws, cap head screws, any of those that protrude from the actual robot frame is going to be counted towards your overall size. So keep that in mind when you actually come in with your robot. Yep. The bumpers. There are a number of different rules here. You have to, of course, be in compliance with all of them. The bumpers must provide complete protection of the frame pruner with no openings. As a, uh, as a reminder for the frame pruner definition, we would, in concept, take a piece of string, And basically run it around the entire perimeter of the robot. You would not likely do this at the actual regional itself, but keep in mind your bumpers basically have to follow this line of string. Well, there's a certain tolerance that's in the rules, but in effect, if these bumpers aren't on the same line as this piece of string, then there's likely going to be an issue when it comes to inspection. Bumper segments once you bury in six inches, so that's basically looking at each one of these pieces here. Have to be basically supported by the robot itself. Can't have um, sections which are basically going to go inwards as they're getting hit. You can have a certain amount of gaps between them, and that's fine. So, for example, um, the robot here will have some slight gaps between the frame. Between the frame and the robot. Again, the certain amount that's allowed by the rules. Make sure that the bumpers extend fully into the corners. The fabric itself has to basically wrap around and be secure. There shouldn't be any looseness around the fabric itself. This Team 501 here has basically a Velcro system that also allows them to interchange their bumper covers. Also allowed. One of the things that often catches up teams when they come for inspection is also the height of their, um, their letters. In this case, I have um, uh, a ruler here, four inches about this mark. Remember, the numbers themselves have to be at four inches of height. And then the stroke width, three quarter inches, uh, not easily shown in this ruler, but only by that much. Remember, your stroke width is something else you'll be looking at. These are important such that the audience is able to see your numbers from basically the spectator seats. The 
bumper reg um, region, these bumpers have to be within basically one inch, seven inches off the floor. And so when, you, when we put this, or a gauge like this, or a tape measure, remember that your bumpers must be basically within the uh, blue tape as shown on this tape, on this ruler itself. When coming up for inspection, please bring the robot up without bumpers attached. We will not probably be checking the, how easy or, or easily removable they are. We'll I'll probably ask for a demonstration at some point during the inspection process. Just remember when you come up, it's easiest because of the weigh-in to have bumpers removed from the robot itself. And I believe that covers it for the initial inspection section. Thank you.